Welcome to the workshop where we're here to put the finishing touches to this Alfa Romeo GT V V6 and we're here for the last push to get it ready for the Nürburgring. So what have we done? We've stripped out a load of weight, we've added nitrous, we've put in a roll cage, we've sort of fixed the brakes and we've had a whole heap of fun with it. Henry loved it, I loved it, okay it's still a bit rough around the edges but it still needs a bit of work. So we're back at my friends at Shark Performance for a lesson in amateur aerodynamics. So this is Austin and we're going to get some help to prove a theory of mine that some of this rather pretty bodywork and this Alfa Romeo is superfluous, it's not needed. But before we get into that, it might be useful to talk about why we are doing this. How tall are you? Um, I'm not really tall. No, I think you're about, are you about that tall? Right, you stick that on and I'm going to tell you about Nuvolari. So who do you think is the greatest racing driver ever? Oh, um, Lewis Hamilton? No, not Lewis, no, no. I can see why you'd think that, it's a great driver, but actually, the man described as the greatest racing driver of all time was a guy called Tazio Nuvolari. Have you ever heard of him? No. No, hardly anybody has. And he's a really important guy. He was described by Mr. Porsche as the greatest racing driver of the past, the present, and the future. And he's a bit of a madman. And that's why I like him, because he was a bit dangerous and a bit crazy. So in 1935, which is a very long time ago, he basically won the German Grand Prix in a car that had 100 horsepower less than everybody else. So he had the slowest car, he came from the back, he overtook absolutely everybody, he won, and he won by two minutes. Everybody expected the Germans to win, and all of the Third Reich were there, so all of the Nazi bad guys were watching. 300,000 people watching, and Nuvolari came from the back to the front to win. And he had a great sense of humour, this is why I love this guy. He crashed into a butcher's shop, and he stole some ham out of the window when he crashed into it which was really funny. So Tazio Nuvolari's Alfa Romeo, the one that should have come last and beat everybody, had 265 horsepower, and that's what I've been trying to build with mine. Now I think we can make this car go a little bit quicker and just get it running a bit better. So you got the overalls on, you look the part, are you ready to help? Yep. I want to explain a thing called power to weight ratio. Sounds boring, but it's actually quite important. Imagine you're really fast at running. Yep. That's like a car having a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Then imagine you're running but you've got a heavy backpack on, would you be faster or slower? Slower. Exactly, now I think that's what we've got with this. This beautiful spoiler on the back here, this Zender spoiler, I think is really heavy. And this car's quite powerful and I've got a theory that this is like trying to run with a heavy backpack on. So if we can lose this spoiler, we'll be great. So we're gonna get a lesson in aerodynamics. So we're gonna apply some silly string mm -hmm. with some very large industrial fans, a bit dangerous, don't tell your mum. Okay. If the string sticks to this, yes. then I think this is in the airflow and it's not actually doing us any good. And if it slips by, then it's doing its job and it's adding downforce to the car and it's something we want to keep. So are you saying basically, if it sticks on, we're going to have to take it off, but if it doesn't stick on, it's going to have to stay on. That's exactly, yeah, you've said it in far better words than I ever could. By the way, I love how your badge is slightly falling off. This is, this is Italian. It's cool, but it's a bit flaky. Yeah. Okay, should we get those cans? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, that was a lot of fun, though we have made quite a mess. Silly string in our homemade wind tunnel, sticks to the spoiler, which proves what? If it sticks on, we're gonna have to take it off, but if it didn't, we could leave it on. But we have to take it off, because that's the silly string on. Okay, now if we take it off, it makes the car lighter, which means the car is gonna be... Faster. Which is what we want. And I think it weighs about three or four kilos, so the effect on the power to weight ratio, off the top of my head, is probably the same as about maybe another half a horsepower. We need all the power we can get, because yeah. power is... Faster. That's what we want, okay. Has your dad got a sweeping brush? I'll go and ask him. I think you should. <laughs> We've saved a few kilos, we've lost that big heavy spoiler. You may have noticed previous episode we had a cloverleaf sticker on the wing and there's a story behind the cloverleaf. 
Don't like stickers, do you? Don't like stickers, no. This is my dad. My dad is a traditional sign writer, and he, like I, think that this car deserves better than cheapo 50p eBay sticker. Quite so right. what we're going to do is paint on a four-leaf clover like all hot alphas had back in the day. But I want this job doing properly. I want it doing old school. There's nothing more old school than my dad. What's, it, what's with a moustache? Snap. <laughs> 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 like a pair of Chuckle Brothers, as a reference for the kids. Yes. Alfa has been painting Cloverleaf since 1923. So Alfa Romeo had four racing drivers. Enzo Ferrari, a guy called Ascari Campari. Do you fancy a drink? That probably sounds good. And Ugo yes. Sivocci. And Sivocci was always the nearly man. And in a fit of frustration, or I don't quite know what, he had a traditional sign writer, just like you, probably with a slightly better moustache, paint on a four-leaf clover and a white diamond on the side of his car. So the white diamond, four sides, symbolised the four drivers in the team, and the four-leaf clover was to bring him luck. And he went down to Targa Florio, which is a really tough race down in Sicily, and he won. He thought, this is great, this brings me luck. And he was really competitive thereafter. And in every subsequent race, he had a four-leaf clover painted onto his car. Until he got to Monza, the sign writer didn't turn up. Sound familiar? It does sound very familiar, actually. Perhaps yeah. he sent you a text saying, sorry, son, the van's broken down. We don't, like we, no, we don't inform people at all, Richard. Just don't turn Just up. Just don't, don't turn up. <laughs> he's an artist. He's allowed to be unpredictable. Well, did this have a happy ending? No, he crashed and died because the sign writer didn't put the lucky four-leaf clover in it. So I need you to put the four-leaf clover on this car. Bring okay. me good luck. We'll need to put the four-leaf clover on to bring you good luck because we don't want you to crash. <laughs> Mum will be furious. Your, okay. mother, your mother would never forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> right, get your brushes out, let's crack on. As a mark of respect, Alpha kept the cloverleaf for their sporty models, but removed one point from that diamond to make a triangle in memory of the missing man, the man that gave them the cloverleaf, Ugo Sivocci. In this GTV, I need all the luck I can get. Young Austin has helped me with the aerodynamics. My dad has helped me with the aesthetics and we've now changed the coolant so it's a bit less gunky. This is actually the first time I've had it up on the ramp so it's the first opportunity I've really had to look underneath because so far we've not really bothered with preventative maintenance, it's all about making it go quicker but whilst it's up on the ramps it's a great opportunity to see what else is wrong with it. Air intake is all held together with uh, tape, that's nice, come back to that. Um, power steering's got a bit of a, bit of a, like that's um, perhaps not what it should be. This is cosmetics, I can live with that. The important thing is all this structure here is all nice and solid and not rusty and that I'm happy with. And this suspension is fantastic and that trick camber on the back that I was a little bit worried about is absolutely rock solid. So, uh, so that's good. So we're pretty much good to go. But there's one last thing before we get too excited. Now I want to make this engine sing. I really want to hear it. So what I'm going to do, I've shelled out a little bit of money and I've got a Ragazan exhaust which will replace this section from here takes out all of those central resonators and finishes here and it's going to make the car sound fantastic. moment of truth. Everything's fitted, we're doing the workshop, I can't wait to see how this sounds. <laughs> to the ring! <laughs> that is great! We're here in the car park, we've bought our ticket, and the entrance is just behind us. Now, there are a few important things to note here. This is a tourist and farting day. Tourist and fart means you buy your ticket, you get on and away you go, but it is not a racetrack. It's a one-way, mostly de-restricted toll road. Okay, thank you, Sean. Let's have some fun. 